Almighty God, our great teacher, Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. Now, let everybody be quiet. By the grace of God, we are going to go to a unique session tonight. Our Father in the Lord will be speaking to us. He's going to be speaking all the way from Kaduna. And so you have to be quiet to be able to hear what he's going to be saying. And you have to be actively attentive and focused. And what we're going to be discussing tonight revolves around skill acquisition in teenage years. Skill acquisition in teenage years. This talks about things that you need to know how to do. By the time it takes the stage, you will understand better. So it's a pleasure for me this evening to bring online to us a father in the Lord professor and pastor said I could say. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Now, listen very carefully. The professor is going to be speaking to you tonight by the grace of God. And it's a person that has an exposure around many universities. Number one, he studied in Amadou Bello University, Saria, and came to Ife where he did his master's and PhD and later went to UI, you know, for another master in education. He also attended Harvard University. Are you with me? On entrepreneurship. And so the issue is going to discuss with you tonight by the grace of God in Nigeria today, you're talking about somebody who is the most qualified to talk to you. And I can assure you, he's going to be talking at your level. It is my prayer that the Lord of hosts will grant you understanding as he begins to speak in Jesus' name. You are blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor K, it's like you are not there. Pastor K, I don't know. Uh, nobody is there. Nobody, I can't hear them. Okay, okay. Maybe they are still eating their lunch. I say, praise the name of the Lord. Raise up your hand. Let me see if you are there with me. Okay, I can see your hand, but I can't hear your voices. But if you can hear me, clap three times like this. Okay, okay, fantastic. If you can hear me, stand up and shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, the most important thing is that you can hear me. I want to start with a word of prayer. Close your eyes wherever you are and let us pray. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for this privilege to speak to these young ones on skill that you gave to Daniel, you gave to Bezali, I gave to so many others in the scriptures. I pray that at the end of the message, you'll be impacted with divine skills in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, I pray that your hand will touch them, revive them, that the message today will transform their life to skillful girls and boys and become men and women in the future. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless the world and give me utterance to share with your people. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let me start by thanking our pastor for the privilege to share with you. I would have come there in person, but I'm currently based in Kaduna. And I thank God for the privilege. I want to share my slide now, if they are ready for me. Let me share my slide. Can I share my slide? The host of disabled participant screen sharing. 
can you allow me to share my screen, please? Uh, because time is going, I want to share my screen. But before then, um, let me start by telling you by the grace of God, what we are going to share today is about 30 years experience in skill acquisition, skill gathering, building skill set, building skill portfolio, which I'm going to share with you. And I believe God that it will be good for you. Those to allow me to share, okay, I can see that you have allowed me now. Please, if you can see my screen, I want you to raise up your hand, wave your hand so that I can see that you are seeing my screen. Wave your hand. Can you see my screen? Okay, thank you. I can see you waving your hand. You can see my screen now. This is what we do, skill acquisition for teenage years. Um, I will quickly start with number one. What are we going to be discussing? There'll be some introduction, and then I'll go to what skills are all about. Number three, I will we'll go to why do we need skill. Number four, how to acquire skill. Number five, we'll do some concluding remarks and all that. Questions will come after. If I'm a little bit fast, just clap your hands to make me to slow down, okay? Uh, because I'm quick to go. There are several slides here, and I have just about 40 minutes uh, to make up this, this slide. This is 420 now, and I hope that uh, before five, I should be able to round up. Now, you have to understand skills in the Bible, still requirement in the Bible. In First Kings chapter 5, verse 6, we are told that there are so many people that don't have skills. There is no skill among them. And it was a problem. They have to go to Lebanon to go and get skillful people. They have to come to Lebanon of all places. And in Africa, that's where you have skillful people. So you are one of them. Uh, they have to send me and say, send me now. It's an urgent message. A man with skill. And then if you look at 2 Chronicles 4.12, you see that those who are skillful are expected to be faithful. And then you see who gives skill is God that gave them knowledge and skill, learning and wisdom. And then you can put your name there. They say, oh, Daniel, my name is Seth. Oh, Seth, I am now come forth to give this skill and understand it. I pray God will give it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I can see some people talking there. Please try to focus, be facing your screen so that you can see me. You see what I'm presenting so that God will help you. Now, look at it. There are different kind of people in our land. Those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, those who wonder what happened, and I will ask which one you did. And there are even those who stop things from happening. So a skillful person is somebody that makes things happen. It's not a grumbler. It's not an excuse maker. Okay? It's not somebody that gives, uh, you know, reason for failure. Efforts don't count. Results count. No matter the 1,000 effort you have put in, nobody is interested. What people are interested in is the skill you display to produce results. Now, look at it again. Now, uh, two things you discover in your life, the day, the most important day, the day you are born and the day you discover why you are born. When you lose your why, you lose your way. And so you have to understand why you are here, why you are born and why God created you, why God made you who you are and why brought you to your family. Now, how long has it been since you learned a new skill? Whatever gets you to where you are today is not enough to get you anywhere further. The crucial variable in the process of turning knowledge into value is creativity, says John Cole, an American author in creativity. So uh, skillfulness involves a lot of creativity. We are going to learn. Now look at the growing in knowledge acquisition. If you look at the gap there, look at this figure that I'm showing you. Anybody, I want to learn. You can see the growth part. I know everything. You will remain where you are. So open your heart, not just your ears, to listen to what we are going to produce, what we are going to give here. Now, we have what we call diagnosis and prognosis. Where were we then? That's what we call the hindsight. Number two, you ask, where are we in the now? That's the inside, you look within. The hindsight, you look behind. Then number three, you will see where are we heading by the way we are going currently, by the path you are taking, the way you are living your life, your Christian life, your prayer life. Where are you heading? Where will it be? That's foresight, looking ahead. Then the next one is to look at where do you want to be? That is in the future. That's the far side. And then the next one, how do we do you get to the future you want to belong? That's upside. And then the next one is applying the 6W1H model canvas to get in there. That is, there are principles, there are models 
that will help you to get to where you are. Can we achieve more than we are currently getting with less? That's quantum sight. And then also, the last one is seeing what's next in the short term, in the medium term, I mean the long term. So you have to understand. So how do we go about entrepreneurial skills and setting your target? First of all, you look within, look within you, behind you, around you, ahead of you, beside you, alongside you. That, that is who can you partner with? Then finally, above. That is what part does God play in my skill acquisition. Within you means what are your skills target? Behind you, what are past lesson experience you can use to prepare? How you are helping your parents at home? How you are doing manual job here and there? How you are working with people to learn? What's happening to others around you? What do you want to accomplish in the short, medium term in life? What resources are available to, for you to scale up your skills? Then who can partner with you and so on and so forth. So these are what we call the hindsight, the foresight and well. Now, if you look at the trend, the trilogy of trend, there's the present, there's what is going on, the trend and the future. What are you currently doing? You ask yourself, what have you, what have you been doing right and what have you been doing wrong? You have to find out that. Please be taking note. What are others doing wrong and what are others doing right? Anybody who wants to gather skills, this are information you must gather. What's trending? ICSS means that is inspiration, creativity, then starting and scaling up. RM there means relationship management. How do you manage relationship in a helix and digital key in? What are the digital skills you can learn? You are not too young to learn some digital skills. And that's why we're here today. How can we predict and create the future that we want? What can we do differently? That is planning and action. Looking at your future, you plan it and do it very well. You see what God will do in your life. Now, if you look at skill is important. Chinese are now leaving university degree. They are concentrating on Portland, where you acquire strength. And so they converted about 600 universities in China to uh, Portland, where people will learn skill. So you can see the future is about skill. I will share with you later. So many of the universities in China now, they are concentrating on skill and not anything else. So what is skill? Skill is not the certificate you acquire. It is the sabi ticket. Sabi, oti sabi, sabi ticket. It's a ticket. Skill is a ticket that open door. So it's not what you know. It's the aptitude, the character you put in. And that is why it's in the university in Ife, where we were, I, I left Ife about 20 years ago. Then what we know is culture. No matter how skillful or how knowledgeable you are, if you don't have that culture, you cannot make it. And that's why Brakora in agriculture, even in agri, they have to put culture there, that there are certain things you must learn. I know about it. Now, look at it. There are various, we have grown from industry 1.0, from the stone age, the, from the fire age, hunting and gathering age. Now in the digital age, you have to learn them. All these are there. For you to learn those skills. Unfortunately for us in this age that we have the computer, the internet of things and whatever that is there for us to learn. And so now we are talking about the industrial revolution 4.0, where the AI, the digital network, the cyber physical thing, and then what have you, they are there. Those are skills you can learn. Now, skills can be broadly divided into you have industrial specific. That means you are talking about the hard skill and the soft skill. The hard skill are the one you do like carpentry. They are skilled. Like welding, they are skilled. Like tailoring, they are skilled. These are hard skills. They are the soft skills that do with relationship management, social attribute, and what have you. So these are non-technical, personal, and transferable, interpersonal, and essential in surviving in this modern world. So it's very important for you to have all these skills. Now, if you look at the hard skills, they have to do, hard skill can be computer skill, foreign language, math skill, programming skill, and so on and so forth. The soft skill there, you can see communication, leadership, teamwork, creativity, emotional intelligence, and what have you, how to manage emotion, how to build relationship that will last, how to create a path for yourself that people have never tried. So these are the areas you need to learn about the soft skill. And then you have, you know, in the soft skills also, you have tried to solve complex problem that, you know, maybe a very difficult problem. You come in, they see that you have the skill to solve it. 
critical thinking, analytical thinking, creativity, emotional intelligence. There was a time we visited our governor. The, my university has problem with him. And he said salary should be stopped. So we went there. He was ranting. He was threatening fire and brimstone. And then he left. He wanted to go. Then I raised up my hand. I said, excuse me. Then I commended him for the past work he has been doing. I told him, he, well, thank God he's been paying salary very well. We talk at length. Eventually, he simmered down, and that is why all of us left happy. Now, what is the importance of skills? Skills are very crucial for building positive relationships, fostering teamwork, resolving conflict in the workplace, and anywhere you find yourself. So skills are leadership attributes. So customers, if you're in business, if you don't have the skill to manage customer, the customer will just be leaving, they'll be going. So soft skills are also very, very important in what you do. So there are people that can have both. They can have hard skill. They can equally have soft skill. So, and this come by training, by practice. Practice make perfect. You can, you perfect your skill with constant and continuous practice. Very much to improve your skill is very essential. So developing hard skills is very, very important. There are so many of them. You have the blockchain, you have the computing, cloud computing, analytical reasoning, artificial intelligence, you have US design, and the rest of them, you can build, you can create your path. You can do it even at this age. There are some that will say, well, I don't have the computer to do it. You can go to cyber cafe. You, some will say, I don't have the money. You can go and look for small manual job. You can do car washing at your spare time and let your parents know what you are doing. You can support your parents in their businesses. You can support your uncle, your friend, your brother, your sister in their business to earn so that you can get buy your computer and do whatever you want to do. So you must know business analysis, sales, scientific computing, video production. These are part of skill that you need to learn and build yourself on it. Now, I can give you some general uh, motto story about one Jelani Aliu, a Nigerian uh, who was able to build, you know, a world-class uh, 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 design, creative design for General Motors in the United States. And he now became a very rich person as a result of displaying that skill. And uh, his inspiring story is something we should not forget. Take the name, you can Google and find that Jelani Aliu, how he did, you know, demonstrated, you know, serious skill with uh, General Motors. So, you take note of that and then you build. Don't skill as a path to relevance and dignify job. If you have skills, you find, if you look at Morocco, Morocco has focused itself in building skills for the youth. So Morocco is uh, Morocco citizen now, the youth are getting jobs all over the world, just like India did. And I think our brother Kola is an Indian guru. You know, today, Indian are leading most of the Fortune 500 companies across the world. So. You can do that and demonstrate that skill. Now, what is the future of education? Starting with the end in mind, prepare your career. And then if you look at now, even freelancing is a skill. That means you can be representing an organization in Lagos in effect. You can be representing an organization in US in effect. I have somebody in Kano like that representing different organizations in Nigeria from across the world. So these are part of the skills you can develop to make yourself. So beyond certificate and degree, skills and freelance, Microsoft approach, you will see that today, they are not looking at your degree, it's what you can do, what you can offer them in the triple E. The triple E, no, but the first E there is employability skills. Employability skills means if you go to look for a job, they call you for interview, they will see your CV, they will see your demonstration of skill, you are now employable. The second thing is to be able to get the employment. Apart from being employable, you should be able to find a way in into the employment. The third E is interpretation. So those are the triple E's in skill acquisition that you must learn. So there is skills that are versatile. You can take them to different industries. There are people that put them in any industry, in the bank, manufacturing, or whatever, they are going to survive. You know, there are some other skills that industry specific in a medical doctor. You know, majority of medical doctors you see that they are confined to hospital and other medical activity. So it's a different skill set. Then skill versus degree. Where well, degree will secure a job opportunity, but skill enable you to professionally adapt and change job demand and excel in, their, in your choosing field. So these are some of the things you have to know 
about skill. Then there is also the need for skill because of the global unemployment since the COVID-19. And even before that, there's also the sustainable development goal number eight that we need to achieve. There is also the unemployment as a result of lack of skill. And that's why people are jobless. There is also the cost of joblessness, increasing unemployment all over. There's also the challenges that we need to address in skill acquisition. The skills in the fourth industrial revolution means, number one, the fusion between the physical, digital, and biological worlds. That is need to do, coined by Professor Claus. An individual in the fourth industrial revolution where we are, the digital world where we are today. So you need to get yourself developing your network skill. One, skill development program. You have to join organization where they are involved in skill development. When you see the advertise, sometimes we used to post it in the church platform. You need to look at that. Make attempt, develop those skills. Even the skill, job search is a skill. If you don't have the skill, you will not be able to get job. You see people getting job, you just roaming about. So it takes a skill. Um, you know, number two, you have to partnership. There are NGO, non profit organizations that are doing some program. You need to join them even as a volunteer. Then there are apprenticeship skills where you go to somebody, you learn the work. He will teach you the work. You learn the skill there. It can be learned. In powerful employee engagement, there are other, you know, people communication project side. You visit project side and say, I'm here to volunteer. When you have time, you are doing volunteerism, the skill you'll be building. By the time you are matured, you are 20, 25 years, you have gathered skill that many of your contemporaries may not have. There is also the, what we call the skill-based volunteerism. For instance, you want to uh, acquire certain skills and you don't have the money. So you go to an organization, you go and present yourself. I say, I'm here to work for free. Let me tell you, I've done that for people in Kaduna with Navy. Navy is a German organization. I brought some people doing streetwise entrepreneurship and I took them to them for freelance, for volunteerism at the end of the day. They were offered employment. So these are some of the things you need to do. There are certain things. I do this in Kaduna. I'm going to show you very soon. The Zamambanza Gwanda Ekingeskia. That's a HOSA program, meaning rather than staying at this better to do the work of truth. That means you are redirecting your mindset to act as opposed to thinking, what can others or the government do for me? This is the mindset of somebody who wants to build his skills lab. And then if emphasizing skill above degree, today employers are prioritizing practical skills over degree. What make it happen? Because people can cheat in exam. People can uh, get their degree anyhow. So the skill gap remain a very significant component of you know, job search. Skill in complement formal education and enhance your employability. Employers value practical skills more than any other thing. Continuously updating your skill is crucial for career growth and staying competitive in the global world, building a skill portfolio. What do you mean by skill portfolio? That means if we look at your CV, we see what you have done that is helped you. Let me even tell you, even if you put that you know how to drive in your certificate as a young person, it's a skill because some marketing organization that prefer people to drive. You know, that they, I went to one uh, hospital a uh, few days ago, the medical doctor he told me that sometimes he drive the he used to drive the ambulance when there's nobody. The drivers maybe they say they are on leave or they are not around. He will drive it. So you need those skills. Those are skills that when people see it in your CV, they know that you can do. And you can talk about things you have market. Maybe you have uh, your marketing skills. What you can do. You can talk entrepreneurial skill, organizational skill, leadership skill. All those things. If you have them, you put them in your CV. You are good to go. So there are also, you know, uh, uh, different portfolio of skills that you can put. Even your computer skill, Microsoft skill, whatever skill you have, you can all put them there. And then you see what if you can do, you know, Python, Java, whatever. Those are skills that you can put in your, in your CV. Now, I've mentioned the avenues for acquiring. I've mentioned the, inter, uh, the internship, apprenticeship program that they do in Igbo land. You go and stay with somebody for six months or one year to learn a particular skill and you use it. You can attend workshop, you can be in LinkedIn program to see how to develop, to build a skill. Let me quickly round up uh, this thing. I've uh, spent some few minutes. Uh, in get certificate and degrees, but acquire practical skills. Skills to bridge the gap between education and employability. Learn from leading economists and tech giants. Skills are the foundation of innovation and entrepreneurship. 
Equip yourself with practical abilities to meet market demand. Be a skill champion. Embrace innovation. Embrace skills now for a better future. Now, uh, this picture, I got this picture. I stumbled on it. I bring it. Uh, this was about 25 years ago. Uh, as you can see, uh, I can see, uh, Pastor, uh, different people there. Where is the Pastor Kola? He's not here. I don't know how comes. He was here, maybe he traveled, he was in India, I suppose, or something like that. So maybe you know some people here, uh, how we've acquired skills so that many are professors or retired. These are local government in Kaduna State that are brought together to teach them skills. And a lot of them gather skills. Some of them are doing very well now. You can see me there with black suit towards the end. Uh, there, and those are the skills we have, have been training people to gather. Sometimes I go and train. Uh, some youth on football skills. You know, football is a place where they demonstrate skill. Uh, but I'm, I've been a small coach and, uh, you know, working with youth, developing them, building skills. So you can learn skills to do so many things around you. You can see, I won the cup in Kaduna back to back to back. You know, knowing that there is nothing you cannot do. By the right, these are skill building. This is what we call Faith Foundation. Faith Foundation are in Lagos. That's where they teach people skill. Please take note of it. One day you will need them to go and learn skill. Faith Foundation is F A T E, not F A I T H. It's F A T E. Faith Foundation, by my right of or by your right of those pictures, you see that this one is the cop that I want with my team in Kaduna teaching them skill. This is driving skills. I've been a driver, you know, involved in driving in Kaduna. You can see this are taxi. So I've been involved in driving skill because. If you want to learn skill, you have to observe. Driving is one of the best skills. I don't know who started driving a car, how he was able to do it to maneuver his way, because that's what you need. You are head, you are hands, you are heart, you are ears, you are brain to work with. So the skills is like driving a car. You need to get it to navigate your way through life. And also involved in a um, safety professional. You can see me there, learning safety skills. I teach people. This one is in Ghana. I went for, you know, coconut drinking competition. You can see, but don't ask whether I won the competition or not. So in Ghana, the open coconut, you drink and see how fast you can drink the coconut and finish. So these are some skills I learned. These are also skills. I was involved in building this gazebo. I built it. Get this. In fact, just a few weeks ago again, we tried to revise it. So you can see some skill. I did it with my student. One of my students, we worked together to build the gazebo together. The skill, you can see it looking like a village square. Even AIT, as you can see there, some um, uh, uh, network station, they came, uh, I mean, media station, they came to uh, interview me to find out the skills involved. And many people are coming to learn from me. I've also learned, I write economics, but I have to learn the skill how to write some poems. I've been able to write this one, Rhythms of Realities, as you can see there. So there is nothing you cannot learn. There's nothing that cannot be learned. Even entrepreneurship that is uh, caught and not taught, it can still be learned. And so these are some of the awards I received as a result of teaching, you know, skill acquisition and entrepreneurship all over the world. I received it. You can see the people I've gathered even. That is the ambassador to UK. I went, you know, all that took me there is, uh, you know, skill acquisition. So I've done a lot of things on skills and you can learn. This is my primary school. I went to my primary school in Jimeta, Yola. I did Karewa Primary School briefly in Yola. And so uh, these are things you go, you teach students skill. And this is uh, my Oba, his eminence, the Amy of Zaria. You know, all is part of my relationship management. This is drumming skill. You know, how to learn the skill, how to play drama, how to do something. You know, in Hausa, we call it Kalungu. So I was involved like that. But this one is in Zimbabwe, learning how to ski. So these are skills, you know, various media station, me in skill, management, teaching skill, and whatever. This is a skill, broadcasting skill. This is life. This is not make believe. I was in Atlanta, Georgia. That A TNS station trying to learn to be involved, even in farming. You know, farming with my bare hands, there is nothing you cannot do to acquire skill. Because if you have it, you can fit in anywhere in the world. Once you have those aptitudes, when you have those character, you have the three C's. That is the character, the competence, you know, the 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 the, the creativity. If you you are better for it. Look at this is skill. 
I, I wish I've gone with uh, my Ankara. I go to say when we went, this is abroad. We travel with different people from different world. This is ACCA. I went there. I'm not an accountant, but I joined there. I was the only one wearing native, as you can see there in the center. And it brought me to the center. Everybody was coming, trying to look at my native. They were marrying it. It's a place where everybody is expected to wear suit. I was the only one that refused and said, look, I wear my native. And I went abroad, you can see. So because, and I discovered that even the Nigerians, they feel embarrassed and disappointed that I do not wear suit and all that. But when they saw the foreigners were coming to admire my native, they started coming. So these are some of the things you do. You can get out of the crowd to go and learn your skill. Skilling, that means you are ensuring you are properly equipped with the right tools for global competitiveness. Upskilling, learning new skills to help in the evolving digital world. Then reskilling, then required retraining with new skills and digital capabilities. So you skill, you upskill, and you reskill. So if you do that, you see that your life is better for it. Try to practice it. As I said, you can join others. Even if you don't know it, you can learn it. You can grow your skill in a portfolio by knowing different things, how to do different things. I'm not a football uh, 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 fan or in touch as such. I just watch and get But when the need arises to be a coach, I became a coach of football in Kaduna. And they thought I could not do anything. I won the cup. The following year, I won. The third year, I won. So eventually I left. Since then, although I've not been involved in it, but once you have the skill, there's nothing you cannot do. There's nothing on earth that a skilled person cannot do with a skill. Now, the question is that, how do you go about skill? Not underperformance, know the level of your competence. There is the most difficult thing to do in skill acquisition is to move somebody from mediocrity to incompetence. A mediocre is somebody who has not been tested. He doesn't know what to do. An incompetent person is somebody who has been tried but was not able to deliver, is better than a mediocre. And then you have an unconsciously incompetent person, somebody who doesn't know that he knows. Then you have the consciously incompetent person, somebody who knows that he doesn't know. That person is better for it. Then we'll teach him. In skill acquisition, you have unconsciously competent. He doesn't know that he knows. So we expose him to knowing. Then you move to the highest level of skill acquisition, that is consciously competent. You know that you know. And by the time you know that you know, you discover that you are better off in every field, in any field, whether engineering, whether manufacturing, you can read, read anything in the university and you, you can become anything all over the world. And so that's why you have to move from the mediocre level, incompetent level, unconsciously incompetent, consciously and incompetent, unconsciously competent, and then you move to consciously competent. Then what? how do you go about it? Can you be a star in skill acquisition? What we call star, number one, that's British Council. Uh, when I was working with British Council, I tried to get it. These are things that will test your situation. If you find yourself in a difficult situation, how do you handle it? That's how to be a star. Number two, in star, tax. Can you handle tax? When they give you a difficult tax, some people run away. I've tested people with tax. They will run away. They cannot go. Then what do you do to be a star? You must take action. There are people that are afraid of taking action. They are afraid of daring that you could take the action to come to this program, you have done very well. I say congratulations to you. Say amen to that and a bigger amen. Then the last one is result. I told you efforts don't count. It's result. There are many people who have put up my efforts. I've done everything. No, 1,000 effort cannot match one result. 1,000 effort is equal to zero. One result is 100%. So this is why you should become a star. Everybody, what is a star? Number one, situation. Number two, tax. Number three, action. Number four, result. So you get it. Now, there's what the people say, SWOT analysis. There's no problem with SWOT analysis. Yes, in SWOT analysis, Can you hear me? I can't see you. Nobody to answer me.
Wow. Hello, can you hear me? I've been asking, nobody is answering. Okay, okay, I should continue. Okay, I can see you now. Thank you. Okay, I can see you now. I don't know. Breakdown transmission. I'm reconnecting, please. Okay, thank you very much. But if you can hear me, clap your hands upwards. Let me see. You are not doing it. Okay, fantastic. That shows you can see me. Can you see my slide? I said not SWOT, not SWOT analysis. Yes, evaluate our strength, appreciate our weaknesses, scan our opportunity, and confront our threat. Why do you want people to know your weaknesses? Why do you want people to know your threat? Better with SWA. SWA means evaluate our strength, scan our opportunity, expand our operation, and produce results. That is what you call, you know, the SWA. S stands for strength, O for opportunities, A for aspiration, R for results. Instead of SWA, weakness and threat is removed. So you do that. Start where you are. Use what you have. Do what you can. That's auto ashi. And so what you need to do is you don't say that, where do I start from? Start where you are. Say, what do I use? The little you have use it. What do I do? Do what you can and all that. So failure cannot cope with persistence. You need to be persistent. Then you see the difference. Be disciplined. Discipline is the, it's not about making yourself, um, it's not the ability to make yourself do something you don't want to do in order to get a result you really want to get. So you need to be disciplined. How do you go about it? You must have burning desire for skill. If you have the burning desire, the next thing will come, opportunity will create itself. Anybody carrying a burning desire for, for, for skill, you get opportunity. After the opportunity, the next thing is to take action. But if you look at it, there is a wide gap between opportunity and action. And something has to come there. What will come? People, excuses. What are the excuses? I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have, you know, TNT. What is TNT is procrastination. Tomorrow, not today. So you don't procrastinate. Too young, too old. But for you, you are very young. Those are the excuses that people give. But what is there is that how do you go about to move from desire to skill? How do you move from desire to skill? Okay? So you must, what you need to do to move from desire to skill is to have goals. People with goals acquire skill with the speed of a jet. And so you need to have those goals. And so excuses don't make anything. But remember, there was a country. And that's the trouble with Nigeria. And the trouble with Nigeria can make things to fall apart. And when things fell apart, Chinua Achebe became no longer at ease. And the arrow of God fell on him. And he became the man of the people. And the Sun newspaper announced that Chinua Achebe died in the antis of the savannah. I want to stop here. I thank God for you uh, and take some questions and then we can close. Uh, because of the decision, I would have closed before now, but thank you. So acquire skills and the better for it. My best wishes, everybody. Let's thank God. Let's give a clap of for Jesus, everybody here. Let me see you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So questions. And then we take your answer about skills. Hallelujah. Any question? Hallelujah. We Amen. Thank God Amen. For the session. Don't forget. Yeah. Start where you are and use what? What you have. Well, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Who is the coordinator? Amen. Is it body? Lady and tremble.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you gained something in that session Amen. with your hands? You gained something in that session. Okay. Somebody should come and tell me what they gained. I need three persons, three persons to tell me what they gained. And I have a gift for you. Three persons that can tell me what they gained in this session. And I have a gift for you if you are correct. One, two more people, two more people. Are you sure? If you are sure, come forward. Oh, yeah. Do I have only boys? What of the girls? Are you sure? Come forward. Be fast, be fast, be fast. So you tell me one thing that you gained in this session. I gained that you should start, you should, you should use what you have. And you should, you should start, and I learn, and learn that there are two types of skills, hard skills and soft skills. And also, I learned that skills can you can use what you the skill you have, you can use it as, uh, judiciously. Please clap for him. Some of you are looking at him. You didn't write anything down. Please stand here. What did you gain in this session? I learned that um, skills are not just to learn vocations, but to also acquire managing skills. And also, I learned that since some some other people have already acquired skills. And they are great. So there is a power in man to speak to acquire skills and be great. So we can also do it. Please clap for him. Clap for him. Clap for him. Clap for him. Please come up. Let them see you now. Yeah, very fast. Be fast. Tell us what you learned from this session. I learned that if you want to become a star, there'll be a situation, there'll be a tax, an action, and a result. And effort don't count. It's results that count. Please give her a round of applause. Come on, clap for her. Clap for her. Clap for her. Oh, yeah, come and collect your gifts. I have something for you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Now we are going for our mentoring session. How many of us enjoyed the last mentoring session? Hallelujah. 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 All right, I have your attention now. We are going for sports. All right. All right, listen, before you go for sports, I have a few information to pass across. Adeni Deborah, Group 19, after this session, come for your program. Then Oladeje Ebonua, Group 1, come for your program manual as well. All right, I want to... How many of... Don't, don't go out to... Awodonya Yobami, Group... 13, come for your manual as well. 
How many of us know that godliness, uh, sorry, cleanliness is next to godliness? You know, Abby, that cleanliness is next to godliness. You know, you are sure. So please, I want to beg you, stop dropping nylons and all sorts around this compound. You met its needs. Use the dustbin. Tell your friend, use the dustbin. Tell the other friend, say, use the dustbin. If I catch anybody dropping anything on the floor, I will add you over to the security. They will flog you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, go for sports. Ade Bule Samuel, group 17, come for your manual. Elu Somi Joshua, group two, come for your manual. Ogutia Olajumoke, come for your manual. Paloni Olatsundu, come for your mentoring booklets. Adeni Debora, oh yeah. Oladeji Epolua. What? Uh, 